Hey guys, welcome back. Let's take a look at this structure that we have here. It looks pretty simple. We just have a rod connected to a pin support and uh, we're pulling 150 kilonewtons off to the right, uh, two thirds of the way down the beam. So if we wanted to solve for some information here, we could easily figure out that the reaction force here at A is 150 kilonewtons going in the other way because this is statically determinate. And then we could also draw the deflection of this member due to this applied force. So the deflection here um, is uh, is the sum, we have this formula here, is the sum of the expression PL over AE for each section where any one of these changes. Now if we drew a free body diagram coming from the right hand side, we'd see that for the first 0.2 meters, the internal force is actually zero uh, because uh, there's there's no reaction or anything over here. So actually so for section one, which is uh, this first part, we actually get zero. And then for the other section, which is 0 0.4 meters long, we actually cross over. And if we drew the free body diagram of this, now we'd have an internal force of 150 kilonewtons. So now we get uh, 150 kilonewtons times the length of this section, which is 0 0.4 meters. Let's actually write this in millimeters. And uh, this is all over the cross-sectional area, which we have there, which is 200 uh, millimeters squared times E, which is 200 gigapascals. And if you remember, gigapascals is also the same units as uh, kilonewtons per millimeter squared. We've been talking about that in the last couple of videos. Uh, so we're going to find out if we calculate this that our our deflection here is going to be just uh, 1.5 millimeters. All right, so now let's imagine that we have the exact same situation here, the exact same beam, except on the right hand side, we're snugged right up against a wall. So if that's the case, the, uh, the rod here won't actually be able to stretch out like it wants to because the wall is going to be in the way. And basically it's going to try to but we're going to be pressing into the wall and we're actually going to be getting a reaction force here at B as well. So our force balance in the, in the X direction now becomes, uh, it becomes RA, so the, react, the horizontal reaction at A, plus uh, the 150 kilonewtons, this is our applied force, plus the horizontal reaction at B, and that all has to be equal to zero. And uh, you'll notice that we actually have too many unknowns here to be able to solve this just using the equations of statics alone. And uh, now this is, is a statically indeterminate problem. But we can solve statically indeterminate problems using our knowledge of uh, the, the deformations that materials undergo on certain loading conditions. So where we have this statically indeterminate problem here where the wall is in place, we know that if we removed the wall, that, uh, that the rod would want to elongate or deform by 1.5 millimeters. Now we do know that the wall is there uh, and the wall is providing a reaction at B. And because we know that the wall, or because we know that the, the rod isn't extending that 1.5 millimeters into the wall, the reaction at B basically just has to push it back that 1.5 millimeters that we were expecting it to extend in its unconfined position. And what we call this is the, the principle of superposition. So the original ind uh, statically indeterminate problem can be represented by the sum of these two situations where one, we've removed the reaction. We call it the redundant reaction, the one that we're removing. And then also adding in the, where we've actually placed the reaction as a force and, and it's giving us the same displacement, the sort of equal and opposite displacement as, uh, as if it was allowed to expand freely. So let's give the initial displacement here just a little prefix or, or subscript, whatever. Uh, but we know that was 1.5 millimeters. And we know that also the displacement here uh, due to the reaction at B also has to be 1.5 millimeters because in real life, this, uh, this rod actually, actually has to end here at point B and be the same initial length as, it's, uh, as it initially started with. So knowing that the initial deformation we'll call it di, uh, has to be equal to the deformation caused in this situation by the reaction here. So we call that dr, or delta, I guess, delta i and delta r. And we do know that uh, we've already calculated it. Uh, this has to be 1.5 millimeters. 
So if we go and use our same equation here, but for this situation, uh, we have uh, PL over AE. PL over AE. And you'll notice that along the distance, uh, along the length of the member, there's nothing changing. The cross section's not changing. The internal force isn't changing. Uh, nothing would be changing here. So we have the internal force here would be reaction at B. The length here would actually be the total length. So we have zero, uh, 600 millimeters times 600 millimeters. And this is all over the cross-sectional area, which is 200 millimeters squared. And times the, uh, uh, the modulus of the elasticity here. So we have 200 gigapascals, which is also the same thing again as kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Now, if we just solve for RB, we have 1.5 millimeters times 200 times 200 divided by 600. Uh, we're going to get RB here in units of kilonewtons, and uh, this turns out to be 100 kilonewtons. This is the reaction force at B, and it would be pointing that way. Now, according to our sum of forces here, then uh, obviously uh, the reaction at A, the horizontal reaction at A, would have to be 50 kilonewtons also pressing in the leftward direction. Now it's no coincidence actually that these numbers are so round and this is two-thirds of the uh, this reaction force is two-thirds of the total applied force and this one is one-third when you see the dimensions here are also one-third and two-thirds. Uh, that is a re that's a result of, of this system of, of this member being uh, being symmetrical and, and uniform across its length and so the the forces here are actually proportional. If we if we brought our applied force closer to A then uh, the reaction here at A actually would be increasing and the reaction at B would be decreasing. And the reason for that would actually be that we'd be getting less elongation and, uh, and less that we have to account for over at B. Um, so that's an introduction to the method of superposition and your first, uh, this might be your first uh, uh, time seeing a statically indeterminate problem. Uh, but they're not always this easy, so join me in the next video and we will do a very similar problem, but one that has a uh, cross-sectional area that is varying and is, is, is not uniform along the length of the member.